Hey, welcome back to the channel. My name is Seem Lund, here with my wife Inka. Today we're actually doing another two-part series about saunas. So part one is on Inka's channel, where we talked a bit pretty much about all the benefits of sauna, the research about it, and uh, pretty much how to do it. Like what are the optimal frequency, temperatures, types, and uh, those kind of things. So yeah, check out part one on uh, Inka's channel in the description. Here in part two, we're actually answering some questions that we asked or people asked on Instagram about, you know, so just, you know, different kinds of, you know, small questions about sauna. And it's more like a Q&A. Do you want to slow down aging? If you do, I'm looking for a few more people who want to reverse their biological clock. If you're interested, then send me an email to info at and I'll send you all the details. So let's start. First question, sauna with cold plunge post-workout, yes or no? So should you do the sauna with a cold plunge after a workout? You know, my opinion is that, that uh, sauna is great after the workout because it helps with the growth hormone release, which can have a, even like an enhancing effect on your uh, results from the workout. Uh, but also just, you know, the recovery side, you uh, supply the muscles and joints with the blood flow and nutrients that are needed for recovery. So it improves all aspects of, you know, recovery and uh, performance or not, not, not like the results that you get from the gym. Uh, with the cold plunge, the issue is that uh, there is some suggestion or research showing that too much cold exposure uh, too cold exposure, like ice baths, cold baths, they can reduce muscle anabolism um, and not necessarily muscle strength or endurance, but muscle anabolism for sure. So it depends on what you're doing. Uh, don't do it after like bodybuilding workout or resistance training where you're trying to build muscle, but after other types of exercise, it's um, okay to do. Yeah, and maybe here, um, I don't know, you have looked more more into this uh, what's the temperature but still making sure that you cool the body enough after a sauna mm. so as we talked previously in my channel is that in Finnish dry sauna and these studies they use this intermediate cooling so just uh, taking a cool shower or rolling in the snow in between sauna sessions is mm. uh, like a good practice to avoid any yeah fainting or yeah yeah, too yeah the, heated up yeah the studies refer to more like the ice baths if you do like a regular mm. cold shower, then it's no, it's fine. It doesn't have any like negative side effects. But if you do like yeah, like this five minutes of sitting in an ice bath, then uh, that would be counterproductive for muscle anabolism. And what do you think about like yeah, in this context, like if you do first exercise, like strenuous exercise, then sauna, which is a stressor, and then cold plunge, which is a stressor, maybe it's just too much stress altogether mm. or i don't know i mean like yeah, it like actually you know. promotes recovery like the, the different types of stressors like the oh, cold okay. like let's say you do your cardio then after that sauna plus cold plunge is very good because the cardio can increase the inflammation and soreness more but and uh the cold will just you know reduce it a lot and reduce the pain or the stiffness on the joints and stuff so i think it depends on the workout ah so it's more like a muscle strength exercise then yeah like i wouldn't mm. do it like after weights uh, but uh, after cardio is actually good for s faster uh, recovery. Okay. Because you don't need like the inflammation for the cardio benefits, mm. but you do need some inflammation for the uh, muscle growth and anabolism. Uh, are sauna blankets good? Mm, I haven't actually used a sauna blanket Me myself. Um, um, I mean, I think infrared sauna blankets probably yeah like they do still have like these infrared lights so it doesn't matter how hot it is you still get the infrared benefits for the skin and sweating a little bit and skin um, but i think that like they're i don't know like i haven't used them like i looking at it i would say that it's a bit like you know messy and uh, you know you have to kind of i don't know how you clean it and i don't know all the procedures involved with that but i think it's still like a, a compact compact sauna blanket or the sauna cubes where you're you know sitting in a cube uh with your head out uh, i think they're still better than nothing at all probably mm, yeah it's just the sweating and mm. detoxifying and getting uh, heated in your body one thing that i found is that in these uh japanese studies and the and the like the protocol in japan is when you do this infrared sauna therapy 
which originates from Japan, apparently, mm-hmm. it's called Waun, uh, is that they go into the sauna for 30 minutes and then they lie under a blanket for 30 minutes, like in mm. a heated room of 28 degrees Celsius. Mm-hmm. So it's not a sauna blanket per se, but it includes this like lying, you know, increasing even the heat, heating of the body with the blanket. Mm. But yeah, also I don't have any experience with sauna plankton. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I think yeah, they're easy to use and like small and compact. But um, maybe you need to stay them for a bit longer, and you know, like you need to clean them mm. more often. Mm. How often and long for benefits? Well, yeah, that's what we covered in detail on part one. But briefly, I'll, we we can say that the frequency is anything. Like four times is the maximum benefits, four to seven times, and four a week. Yeah, and four is better than one time a week. Mm. Uh, so yeah, anywhere as lo- as much as you can, pretty much. Yeah, so at least one time a week. Mm. Uh, but better if you can go several times a week. Stay like twenty minutes at least at a time, and then come off, cool your body. Maybe you can do another session of twenty minutes if you feel yeah. you want to, but you don't have to, and. Yeah, 80 degrees Celsius. Mm. Yeah, and we have another question uh, later that's, is it okay to be in the sauna of three plus hours? <laughs> in Finland, many people actually do these long sauna sessions. Mm. I don't know if it's more beneficial than doing 20 minutes, but in, in the Laukanen study, actually, they showed that the increased duration being in sauna was linked to better benefits. Mm. But the average that Finnish people that, like, did that was already linked to many health benefits was yeah. there 20 minutes about i think yeah like you don't need to do it any longer than 20 to 30 minutes after that you just increase the risk of dehydration and um, you lose a lot of minerals through sweat, sweat as mm. well especially sodium and if you're not like replenishing the uh, electrolytes and salt then yeah you're probably going to get some heat stroke or something like that uh, because yeah like you lose even like in one hour of sweating you lose like almost two grams of salt. So almost like your entire RDA of salt <laughs> you lose in one hour. So mm-hmm. if you like completely deplete yourself, then not, you know, probably some uh, health dangers come from that. So when, for example, in Finland, when we do this kind of longer sauna sessions, it's usually you go to sauna, you stay there, you go out. You yeah. may even hang out outside in the snow, you know, like yeah, few minutes. Yeah, I think I think this question also probably mm. refers to that. You know, he they go to the sauna for twenty minutes or something, then they go out, drink some beer in the lobby, uh, go take a swim sometimes, then mm. back to the sauna for twenty minutes, and you know, back and forth. I don't think yeah, like <laughs> you should stay in the sauna literally for three hours in the same room all the time. Then that's probably ever like very dangerous. But if you do it like this, that you know, you do twenty minute sets pretty much and rest in between. Yeah, I mean, it's fine, I guess. I Probably guess, greater it's, it's, detox benefits, but bit, also detox of water and minerals and everything. Yeah. So if you do this, you just need to drink a lot and, mm. you know, drink mineral water and make sure you cool your body in between the sessions. But yeah. there is probably no need for actually yeah. do this. Yeah. Um, when is optimal to drink during sauna? Before, during or after? Or all three? I what would, do you think? Well, I would say all three. Mm. It depends on how fast you get yeah, how dehydrated. Is, yeah. yeah, and how much you sweat and everything. I usually prehydrate before sauna. Mm. So I drink some minerals and I drink uh, water before sauna already. Then sometimes I take a few zips in, in between sauna session and I drink yeah. after as well. Depend on, on the sweating. and. Mm. Yeah, mm. I, I mostly do it like before and after. So I like... A, mm. If I stay in the sauna for 20, 30 minutes, then I don't really usually drink anything mm. between there. Um, not usually a question, not actually a question, but would be cool if you could also promo sauna just for relaxing. And another one is, please mention it's for pleasure and relaxation, not only for efficient benefits. Yeah, we talked about this at the yeah. previous part, that that's a big, big part of the sauna benefits is that it's such a relaxing place to be. There is no distractions. You're just there. It's kind of like a mindfulness thing as well. Mm. Yeah. And in it's also might be a, like a social place. 
Mm. Yeah. Don't fall asleep. <laughs> though. So don't like if you lay yeah. down and you feel sleepy, then probably not a good idea. Mm. So uh, try to like you know sit so that you would stay awake. Mm. Uh, or if you do lay down, then you know make sure that you're not about to fall asleep. Mm. Next question: uh, Should I worry about my testicles getting heat, testosterone, semen quality, etc.? Uh, yeah, I, w- I would probably be careful with it. So, uh, you know, to the extent or of how careful you should be depends a lot. You know, if you have already existing like fertility issues, then the excess heat and so on are probably makes it makes it worse, <laughs> so to say. And if you are like have you have, you're you're trying to get uh, pregnant or something, but it isn't working, and then you do all the sauna as well, then I would probably like stop the sauna for the time being. If you're not, you know, trying to get pregnant um, as a man, you know, trying to <laughs> get your woman pregnant and uh, not as a man. But, you know, that in that case, uh, you wouldn't have to, like, worry about it uh, that much that you all, like, manically need to, like, cool down the testicles um, because the uh, spermatogenesis and those things, uh, they resume afterwards. So you just have to stop doing the sauna for a little bit. But I do think it's, like, you know, good practice as a man to just cool down the testicles after the sauna with some cold water and maybe like, yeah, if you're very careful, then having like some cold pack or um, just cold water, even doing the sauna through like splash on the testicles. Uh, next question. What's the best entry level purchase bag or small wood two piece sauna bags require more time? Bags. What uh, do you mean by bags? Not sure. <laughs> is it the sauna maybe the sauna like the cube, cl- cube thing or the maybe yeah. uh, i mean the best entry for purchase is like you would the best entry is probably like going to the gym mm. <laughs> or you know if you have like a local gym or something that's probably the best find a gym that has a sauna that's kind of the best uh, i think that's very beneficial it's just like mm. find the gym usually the membership includes the access to the sauna mm. so you can go to the gym for the gym or you can go to the gym for the sauna. It's yeah. very, very easy. Like, there is no need to actually have your own sauna if you can go somewhere. Yeah. But also, some people like to have their own gym. So, why not all own sauna? I think infrared sauna is probably the easiest at the mm. beginning. Because you can put it in any room. It's not big. Like, we have it in a hallway. Mm. <laughs> and uh, it fits there. Um, yeah, like yeah. yeah it's, it's I, very I personally, easy. I, I personally wouldn't want to bother with an infrared blanket or these cubes. Yeah, me neither. Um, I would much rather have uh, just a regular, actual this. Uh, yeah, proper sauna. Yeah, but uh, but of yeah. course it's not available for everyone. And then if it's like if you have the option of actually having a sauna in your house, mm. I think that's one of the best things to do. Yeah. But if you would have. If you would choose between a back and going to the local gym for a Finnish dry sauna, then I would go to the gym. Mm. Yes. Uh, question. Uh, when you're not used to sauna, is it risky? Yeah, to a certain extent, yeah. Like, you can definitely, like, overheat more easily or faint if you're not used to it. So it mm. kind of, yeah, have to build up the heat adaptation, adaptation over time. But you do you do it actually pretty fast. Like even within a few weeks, you're very fast adapted to the heat. Mm. And just to recognize and learn at the beginning how your body reacts to it is quite important. So um, I have an example of this. Uh, I have a friend who's Chinese, and she came one of the first times she was in sauna was in um, my parents' house, and uh, we we stayed in sauna for maybe ten minutes, and then I told her let's cool off a bit and it wasn't very it was i think 60 70 degrees mm. but after that she came out she was already very fainty and she wasn't hasn't been used to it and um so now she's been in finland for over five years be close to 10 years and she's very used to saunas now mm. uh, but at the beginning it was a bit harder for her and you need to kind of know how your body reacts and then, you know, be very gentle to it at first, make sure you hydrate and stuff like that. Yeah. But it's not like usually I wouldn't expect it to be anything dangerous for, for the body. It's just yeah, I gets mean, uncomfortable. Yeah, uncomfortable and the faint is probably the biggest issue if you're not used to it. Or like if you have high high blood pressure, mm. then that's also probably something to 
be more careful with because uh, you know the sauna does increase your heart rate and stuff like that in the short term it can or in the long term it reduces blood pressure but in the short term like it can be too much and if you do it like you know cold like through the sauna and into the cold water like ice lake then that can also be dangerous if you have hypertension or some heart disease mm. because this sudden like shifts in the temperature can be too much for the heart mm. uh, so yeah like you have to be kind of modified based on that mm. but in general like sauna is pretty safe so yeah no need to stress over it or anything in finland like even children go to sauna so <laughs> yes <laughs> babies as well really babies well i when i was a baby they took me to sauna <laughs> um Any hints about paraplegics or people with loss of thermal sensitivity doing sauna? So pr- kind of similar that, you know, don't do it too much um, and look at like, you know, obviously the temperature, look at the humidity. If it's too high humidity, then you can overheat more easily mm. and cause more stress to the body. And obviously the time is easy to track, like don't be in the sauna for, you know, 60 minutes in a row. You know, the optimal time is somewhere like, you know, 19 to 30 minutes. And uh, if you're starting off first, then stay like only 15 minutes. Then uh, after that, go for yeah, like 20 minutes and just, uh, yeah, try to like cool down your body still after coming out of the sauna. Like cool down the body a little bit with some uh, cold water. Um, how How long do you stay in the sauna room? How many times do you throw the water and how many rounds do you usually do? Mm. We touched a little bit on this topic, mm. um, but the water throwing we didn't cover. Mm. So I guess I would, this is a question, question but I, I think about three times I would throw water. Depends four, on four the sauna, five yeah, times, like yeah. how hot it is, like if it's very Like you're not that super hot, then you can throw more because you want to get it hotter. If it's already like burning and stuff, then you throw less. So the mm. the the water is kind of yeah like to calibrate <laughs> the heat level of the room. Yeah. But usually we stay, you know, twenty minutes usually, and we don't usually do multiple rounds because we already do the sauna like you know almost every day. Uh, but if you like going to the sauna once a week, then I would do like multiple rounds. I would do like two rounds, twenty mm. minutes each probably. Mm. Um, and yeah and don't throw the water too frequently it's yeah. generally not a good idea to throw it every 30 seconds or so it gets too hot very mm. fast so too much heat is also not good for you so just like every now and then to get this like a, a wave and then let it cool down yeah and what it actually does is that it cools down the room Uh, in the long term so like mm. in the show you throw it yeah there's a like heat wave coming but uh, it uh, like reduces the overall temperature of the room after after that mm. so, oh, interesting. so yeah like mm. it does raise the heat wave but it kind of cools down the body mm-hmm. or the the room um best time of day to use and prefer the binder when using so we talked about the time which is you know Pretty much everything, every any time except five, six hours before bed, um, and the preferred binder to use, like so, yeah, like if you detox and sweat in the sauna, then it's good to you know bind to those toxins in some shape or form. If you sweat, yeah, like you just you do want to like wash off the sweat because otherwise you reabsorb the toxins in the sweat. Uh, but like any supplements as binders, uh, we don't usually use it. Mm. Uh, we just yeah wash. Uh, but if you would want to use like activated charcoal, it's probably pretty good, and chlorella and spirulina. Mm. Uh, like I, I don't think that you need any, any like yeah. massive binders. Yeah, like because the sauna itself is already a detox process. Yeah, like the sauna doesn't make you detox in your bloodstream. Yeah, like it's not like a liver detox. Yeah, like you're you, sweating. You, you would need it out. to. You would need more of these binders if you are doing like fasting or some other detox protocols. But in the sauna, the majority of the toxins come out of the skin through mm. the sweat so that's the, what you want to like you know remove and we briefly discussed about niacin like if you want to enhance this process then niacin mm. helps to really push those things out yeah next question uh, is doing 45 minutes four plus times per week in an infrared sauna safe or recommended 
Yeah, I mean, it's good. Uh, it's safe for sure. Like, there's no side effects. And from a health side, then four times a week, based on studies, at least is linked to all of the kind of benefits. Yeah, I mean, disease and there is no necessarily need to do that long. Yeah, you but need- if you like it, then why not? One thing, the only thing I guess here is to monitor is the the humidity. If the infrared sauna or the environment is very humid, then you know staying even at 60 degrees in a very humid environment is not good. But yeah, if it's not usually infrared saunas are not humid. Mm. And uh, mm. yeah, mm-hmm. like 20 minutes even with the infrared sauna is like a good. Mm. Like you get all the benefits from there already, pretty much. Mm. Maybe thirty minutes most. Thirty minutes, yeah. Mm. Uh, with the infrared, I think like one of the issues is that you know too much infrared is also harmful uh, because it's like radiation in <laughs> like small amounts. And, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, like I wouldn't maybe forty-five minutes is a bit too much. Mm. So, you know. Yeah. And too much like infrared light can also like damage the skin. So it's like again a moderate thing that you need to do like twenty to thirty minutes. Mm. It's probably like the most recommended. Next question are reasons why I don't sweat a lot in the sauna. It's pretty hot and everyone around me is sweating. <laughs> so you don't sweat <laughs> that much either. So what do you think is the reason? I don't know. I've, <laughs> I've never sweated that much, even in workouts. Or I think it's mm. just personal quality. I know many people who sweat immediately, like you. Mm. And I know many people who doesn't just sweat so much. It might be related to some like hormonal functions or just, mm. you know, skin, skin qualities or whatever. Well, I think for you, it's because of you have like a slightly lower body temperature as a baseline. Yeah. So you have a cooler, colder body a little bit uh, and lower like metabolic rate. Mm. So that's you need like a bigger, you need more heat to first heat up the body to normal levels and then start to get the hypothermia. Yeah, and I've actually hacked this thing. I know how to get my body to sweat immediately in infrared sauna, but it requires the normal sauna. Mm. So if I go to the normal sauna only, I still require like 15, 20 minutes to start wetting, sweating. But if I first go to normal sauna for mm. five minutes and then I go to infrared sauna, I start sweating in infrared sauna immediately. Yeah. Yeah, so as you so said, like, it's so probably it, just like you elevating. Heat, you need to heat up your body first and uh, then get to hyperthermia. Yeah, so maybe try, I don't know, a small exercise before or something mm. to get your body uh, warm warm up and then go to sauna. Yeah. Uh, next question. Should you mix infrared sauna with a dry sauna throughout the week? Well, I just briefly touched <laughs> on this topic. If you want to sweat this. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I did it frequently when we were in Finland and in, in my in our gym we had both saunas so I first went to the normal sauna for five minutes and then to the infrared sauna mm. and I guess the clue here was not to stay in both saunas for 30 minutes but actually five minutes to heat up the body and then go to the infrared sauna mm. uh, I did it because I just really wanted to sweat mm. in the infrared sauna and I really needed to take the infrared sauna because I had knee recovery process going on mm. so I wanted yeah. mostly use that for the recovery process but yeah. I don't see any reason why you couldn't mix these saunas as long as you don't go excessive yeah, I think I guess he means like you know one day you do regular sauna, the other mm. day you infrared sauna. So like I think cycling, that's very good. I think that's like yeah. actually you get more benefits by combining them because yeah. there are some things that you don't get from the dry sauna that you get from the infrared, which is you know the joint benefits and the skin collagen synthesis and the brain synaptogenesis and uh, melatonin production from the infrared light. Mm, yeah. So like yeah, optimally you probably want to do both. If I had to choose only one, then I would choose the infrared. Because you can get still some cardiovascular benefits from the infrared as well, mm. but uh, you know, ideally both, I think. Mm. So well, what we do is that we do most of the day or most of the time we do the infrared. So like say maybe three times a week we do infrared and maybe one to two times we do the regular sauna, mm. something like that. If I had to choose only one, I would actually use the dry sauna mm. and I would use infrared light. Ah. Like a light device yeah, for the infrared benefits. Yeah, that's that's possible as well with the red light. Therapy. Yeah, because it's harder for me to sweat in infrared sauna. Mm. And the dry sauna, I get yeah sweaty. So Yes. So that's a preference as well. 
difference between infrared and traditional so we kind of alluded to that mm. and in the part one we talked about it as well but most of it is the the infrared penetrates deeper so it reaches joints and brain tissue would you say steam room or far infrared sauna is more beneficial to overall health steam room not <laughs> yeah infrared sauna is definitely healthier yeah so in steam room you cannot sweat that well and it uh, can actually pose a strain to the heart so definitely dry sauna or infrared sauna. Mm. How long should one be in sauna to get most benefits and also how hot should be? We yeah, covered part this. Part one, mm. but you know, briefly 20 to 30 minutes and... Uh, 80 degrees Celsius. Yeah. Just after sauna, my knees and quads feel really tight. Why is that? Um, could it be the loss of electrolytes and minerals? I have no... Yeah. I don't know. That was just a guess. Uh, yeah, it could be. You may... Knees feel sore. Uh, tight. Okay, interesting. Maybe you're I don't know. sitting weirdly or... I don't know. Maybe you're yeah, sitting there. Um, you could do like some stre stretching if it's uh, tight. Mm. That could help. Uh, regular. Last question is a regular versus infrared. Which is, yeah, we <laughs> talked about already. Uh, so, yeah, check out part one for the full breakdown of that on Inka's channel in the description. Uh, but, yeah, other than that, thanks for watching this video. Where can people find you? Uh, so, my YouTube is youtube.com slash at I am Inka Land. Mm -hmm. And thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click a like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.